Welcome back to Health in Today's Woman. Tonight we're talking about the transition of back to school. In our first segment, we talked about kindergarten. In this segment, I want to focus on the middle school years, a time of major transition for students as well as parents. So I want to again uh, introduce Dr. Brent Rosser, who is a pediatrician at the Murfreesboro Medical Clinic, who is nice enough to join me tonight. So Brent, I want to start off with just the whole idea of what are the medical requirements for getting into middle school? Because we talked about it with kindergarten. What are the medical requirements going into, into middle school? Well, middle school, the, the, the big year for middle school is seventh grade. Right. The state okay. has picked seventh grade for them to look again at immunization records. Okay. And the big uh, immunization that we're having to catch up kids on is hepatitis A. And oh, okay. that is a vaccine that's been around for a long time, but it hasn't been required for school until the last few years. Really? Now, it's an immunization that children get between one and two, but a lot of uh, older kids that are maybe in late elementary or early middle school were too, available. wasn't available then, yeah. and so we have to catch those children up. And so uh, a lot of parents come in saying, we need the seventh grade shots, and that's what they're talking about is hepatitis A uh, series, which is two shots six months apart. Interesting, because this because I remember when I started medical school in 96, nobody was doing hepatitis B. So I guess some of these kids may be around that time too. I bet y'all were having to catch up hepatitis B recently too. Hepatitis A wasn't even known then. Because uh, hepatitis, hepatitis A was not known when I was in medical school. Right. and it's so it, How old is that shot? It's not very old. The shot has been around for a while. It, it was required in certain states, okay. uh, mainly in the Southwest, okay. but it wasn't uh, prevalent in other parts of the country in, until fairly recently in daycare settings mainly. Interesting. So they, start, they start added that shot between one and two, but now it's required for school uh, by seventh grade. Interesting. Another big vaccination that comes up in this age group is the HPV vaccine. Right. And I do want to mention that there's something unusual about this that's changed in the last several years and that is now given to both boys and girls beginning at the age of, most people say 11. I think it goes all the way down to 9. It can go down to 9. But most people are saying that the age that most people are discussing is 11 to 12. How do you address that with your population? Well, it, that, that shot is a little bit tricky. It's, um, it's a sexually transmitted infection. It's a viral infection. And so that makes people a little bit uneasy to talk about that when their children are 11 or 12 years old. Now, the way that I explain it to a lot of parents is it's the only shot I know of that prevents cancer. That virus leads to cervical cancer in females. So people ask, why do we give it to males? Well, it can be passed on through the male to the female. Correct. And males can have physical uh, factors with HPV virus too. Uh, genital warts and things like that and so um, you know a lot of parents like I said feel uneasy and I just try to explain to them later on uh, when they when they're older and they get married right. and you know they don't they don't know what what their partner had been doing earlier on and they may they pass that, that infection on to them so it's important it's somewhere in those teenage years to get that vaccine it's a three-shot series okay. like you said it can be given as early as nine a lot of times it doesn't come up until later on in the teenage years and it's a great Talk, discussion here because this is going to be a huge deal, especially with the addition of boys. Now, will insurance coverage coverage for boys a little bit different? I understand than girls. Is that changing? It, we're hoping it, it'll get better. There are some insurance companies that still do not cover for boys, but they will for for females. Right. So what I tell parents to do is call their insurance company and and write down who they spoke with because we've had some problems where you were told it was covered and it wasn't. Sometimes our office can help with that and, and let the parents know if it's going to be covered or not. Right. And, uh, but because it's, it's not a cheap immunization and if their insurance doesn't cover it, they're going to have to pay for it. Right. Let me, uh, I want to take another little bit of a look. And this is an, uh, another time when kids are making major changes. And one of the big changes they're doing is athletics. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden they've been, maybe have been playing in their elementary school, has some leagues and things like that. When you start getting to junior high, it's getting a lot more serious. What are the requirements for the state of Tennessee for these kids to play athletics in the middle school years? Well, similar to the kindergarten uh, physical exam, they have to have a physical, physical exam that calendar year. And um, for most sports, they won't accept a physical, physical exam until after May 1st for the following school year. Okay. So they'll have to have a sports physical done in the office. Uh, and there are special forms. Uh, some are for middle school, some are for high school that uh, the state gives us and that can be printed off on, online that they bring in that we ch check that they've had a physical exam. Right. We write down uh, their weight and height and blood pressure. We look at their shot records again. Okay. And uh, it's, so it's a little bit different than the regular checkup because we look at other factors uh, like musculoskeletal system and we right. ask 
history questions like have they ever had concussions or passing out problems, family history of heart disease at young ages and things like that. Now this is very important because you know the when I was growing up we never talked about this kind of stuff. You had to have sports physicals but they really weren't as big a deal now. We've had so many issues with kids dying from heart problems uh, and things like this. This is something that's very serious especially with concussions uh, and the the increasing competitiveness of these sports. Do you agree? Absolutely. We're seeing more and more, uh, like you said, in the news, you'll see high school, college athletes having heart problems where they'll, they'll die uh, right. on the field. Uh, more, we're learning more and more about concussions and how, I don't think the, the rate of concussions is higher. I think we're just, we just know more about it. And so we're looking for it more. And, we're, uh, and it's difficult sometimes to talk to the parents about those things and also to deal with coaches who want right. to play their, their athletes yes. more and more. But I think it's getting better because they realize how important it is. Now, I want to take another thing that's going on in this age group, and that's the whole idea of changes. I mean, the boys are starting to have voice changes, and they're starting to get hair. Uh, the girls are starting to have breast development. They're starting their periods. This is a real time of transition for kids. How do you address that with these kids in your practice in this middle school age group? Well, it can be difficult because every child develops differently. In, in middle school, you'll walk around the halls and see some kids that are really tall and have deep voices and other kids the same age that are still real short and have high voices and there's no signs of puberty at all. So when I see those kids in the office, I, I try to talk to them one-on-one. -on -one. Maybe sometimes I'll ask the parents to leave the room because I think maybe sometimes they'll listen to me a little bit more than they'll listen to their parents, unfortunately. But I also encourage the parents, too, to discuss that with their child so, so they're hearing it from home also. And this is something I think is so important, and I've interviewed Brent before, and I'm so proud to work with somebody like Brent because I think it's so important that you're willing to take that time to talk to these kids because a lot of times that's what they need more than anything else is somebody to communicate with them because this is an intimidating experience. I can't tell you how many students I've had that have come to me because they're scared because they haven't started their period. All my friends have started their periods. Of course, I'm going to see that in gynecology, but I'm really impressed and I want to really highlight that. I think you do such a great job and I'm really proud to work with such great people at the clinic. We'll be right back after these messages. We're going to take a look at high school.